Hello and welcome to the Curiosity Podcast, a show to help you thrive in your e-commerce and digital business. And now your host, Matt Edmondson. Well, hello and welcome to another Curiosity Podcast with me, your host, Matt Edmonds. And that's right, we have got the show going on. We are recording with a very special guest today. Uh, it's a little bit unusual. It's a bit old school today, actually, going back to our sort of roots where we do these coaching calls uh, on a Skype call. And we've got a chap called Simon who I'm going to introduce in just a minute. Uh, and we are going to do a coaching call and go through his site and see how we can make it better. Now, if you have been tuning in to the show, uh, you will know that at the same time as recording the interview with Simon, we are also broadcasting live on Facebook. So if you are on Facebook, do come and watch. Do get involved and add your input and your comments and your advice. I am sure Simon would greatly appreciate it. Um, it would be uh, great if the community can all join in as we're in an unprecedented time, aren't we? A very interesting season and uh, e-commerce seems to be the business to be in at the moment, uh, but it's no guarantee that just having a site up means you're going to get sales. So we still have to go through the basics. We still have to go through the fundamentals of how do we make our websites better and how do we increase our conversion. And that is what this particular show is going to be all about. So do stay tuned uh, and do get involved if you're on Facebook. Now, if you are not on Facebook and you're listening to this show uh, via the podcast platforms such as iTunes and Stitcher and all those amazing places, then do make sure you subscribe because you know what, we put out regular podcasts and I'd hate for you to miss them uh, because they're usually full of great content. We have experts and guests on every show who are more than happy to share some incredible insights and pieces of wisdom which just blow me away and uh, you don't want to miss that. You want to stay connected with that. So do subscribe. The shows are free. You don't have to pay anything. Um, uh, so make sure you get them wherever you subscribe. And of course, if you're an audio listener and you hear me talking about Facebook Live and you think, well, that sounds interesting, it is because when we do the Facebook Lives, as I'm interviewing the guests, you have the chance to add your questions and your comments uh, as we do the interview. So you get to talk directly with the experts. So if you haven't con uh, connected with me yet on Facebook, make sure you do. Just go to facebook.com forward slash Matt Edmondson CO. Um, CEO as in company, not CEO. CEO, I maybe should have named that better. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, but Matt Edmondson, CEO, and you will find all the information there. Just hit the notification buttons when we go live and you will get notified when we do go live. And so you can join in, which is great. Now, before we jump into the show and get to uh, uh, all the amazing stuff that Simon's trying to do, let me just give a big shout out to, of course, our sponsors. The first one being Curious Digital. Curious Digital is an amazing e-commerce platform that I use to drive and run all of my own e-commerce businesses. So if you are in the market for a new e-commerce platform, do check it out. And I'm going to give you a little sneak peek right now. Um, so if you are watching this live or watch the video before the podcast goes out, you will know this ahead of time. Um, basically, uh, Curious has decided that their basic e-commerce platform is going to be free. That's right. They're going to put it out for free during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, there'll be a, a free model. There'll be a pay what you can type model. And they are going to heavily discount all of their standard uh, e-commerce platforms because you know what, now is such a great time to set up and start and run your own e-commerce business. As I've been putting out on Facebook Live, there, there's so many great opportunities right now uh, and there's many reasons why I think this is such a great time. Um, now, if you're listening to this on the podcast, depending on where the crisis is at, um, hopefully the KD platform is still free. So if you are, or heavily discounted, so if you are in the market uh, for a, a, a new e-commerce platform, do go check it out and help those guys help other people build amazing businesses around the world, including yours. Why not? Have a go. See how you get on. The other sponsor of the show is the incredible Lightbulb Agency, which is an end-to-end e-commerce services business. They're fantastic. They basically do all the bits of e-commerce that you do not want to do or do not have the expertise to do. 
So uh, I'll give you an example. We have a client where we do their fulfillment uh, through Lightbulb Agency and they send all of their stock to the warehouse uh, and the amazing guys at Lightbulb there, whenever an order comes in, picks and packs it usually the same day, gets it out, packaged how exactly how the client likes it, uh, track deliveries to their customers, amazing service So um, and really super competitive rates. So all of those types of things to do with e-commerce, you should check those guys out because they do a fab job. Now, all of that said, if you want to know more about Curious, if you want to know more about Lightbulb, do check out the show notes for this podcast on my website, mattedmondson.com. We will put a link to Curious. We will put a link to Lightbulb and you can check those out. But of course, I'm also going to put in the show notes a link to the today's guest uh, website, which is Simon, Simon Driscoll. Let me bring Simon in. Simon, hello. How are you doing? Hi, Matt. Yeah, good. Really good. Thanks for having me. No worries. It's great to have you here. Um, I've got multiple screens going on in front of me right now. So if you see my eyes wandering left and right, uh, I may seem a little bit disjointed. I'm just tracking 40,000 things. <laughs> so do forgive yeah. me. But it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Good. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. I, I really hope you can you can help me out here. Well, that's the plan. Now, yeah. before we jump in, let's um, let's learn a little bit about your good self. Whereabouts are you at the moment other than your front room? I'm in the back room. Oh, okay. And uh, <laughs> we're in uh, we're in a place called Uxbridge, which is West London, quite near Heathrow. Um, and yeah, we've 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 been here for about five years. Me and my wife and my dog, Jeff. You, your wife and your dog. I take it your dog's called Jeff and not your wife. <laughs> yeah, my dog's called Jeff. And my wife is called Liz. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And um, you're based in Uxbridge near Heathrow, like you say. Are you? Yeah. Um, it's, been, it's been in the news a lot recently with the the Heathrow uh, runway yeah. type thing. That's all a, all a bit of fun, it, it seems. It is, yeah. And and Boris being our MP as well. So uh, oh, is yeah, he? he's yeah. So uh, so he's really him. accessible right now. Yeah. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's actually tried our products. He's uh, he sent me a nice letter actually. Oh I, really? He, I, yeah, I door stepped him in uh, HSBC on the high street. <laughs> so yeah, he has tried it. That's, just explain that a little bit more. What do you mean when you say you door stepped him in HSBC? It's, it's a bit. It's a bit weird. I was. My bank is HSBC. They used to do this thing where you could do like a little pop up shop mm-hmm. in HSBC. So I was just standing there with a bunch of cleansers with builders trying to pay their checks in. Boris Johnson pops in to get some cash out of the machine. And I thrust some shave cream and cleansers in his in his hand. Uh, his PR people took some pictures, and uh, I was on his Twitter feed. Oh, wow. um, so yeah, got got a nice letter from him. And this is this is before his prime minister. This was about a year ago, just when I launched. Um, and yeah, so he has tried it, and I, I put his his new uh, more tidy look down to my products. So <laughs> yeah. That's so fantastic. I think, that's yeah. fantastic. And so that's really, really nice. He wrote you a letter. Um, yeah. And and if you go to his Twitter feed now, you can see a picture of me and him uh, there. Okay. Very good. So, yeah, just yeah. like you saw my daughter actually walking behind me. <laughs> uh, so that was my daughter. Because uh, I'm, I'm in the shed in the back garden doing this. Uh, studio, Matt. Sorry, studio. studio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you a story about my studio because um, I built this studio. Uh, about two three years ago with uh, wood from our first warehouse so we had all these wooden shelves and we moved warehouse and we took all the wood down and I thought well I can recycle that and I'll build a shed uh, a studio at the bottom of the garden and I called it the man cave and I said to my wife and my kids do you mind if I just have this space to me because it's just nice to have a space and I I built Mm. this and I put it at the end of the garden I have the wonderful views down the garden and I had my desk and I had a, a nice chair I had my crystal cut uh, decanter with my bird in, and uh, it was it was a wonderful space for about a year. Yeah. And after about a year, my wife, who'd started teaching at this point, um, came to me and said, "Listen, uh, she teaches English to refugees and asylum seekers for a local charity. It was a really good cause, and I was really pleased for her. you know she's very fulfilled doing what she does. Um, but she's like, I need a desk and I need a space to work." <laughs> Yeah, you need to take that chair in the book. <laughs> so it's no longer called the man cave. It's just called the cave, <laughs> yeah. uh, as it were. So, uh, yeah, welcome to my cave. It's very so, impressive. Yeah. Um, have you got any other famous clients besides Boris Johnson? I don't think so. Um, uh, 
I no, no, what, when I when I started this business, I was doing um, fairs and and um, markets. Yeah. Um, so I did some posh ones up in in um, Highgate and Hampstead and. I, th- I think I may have sold some some stuff to some supermodels, but I'm I'm not exactly sure. I'm, okay. I, I, I don't know them, but yeah, but no, 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 no other famous customers. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, you know, it's good to have at least some famous customers on your list. Yeah. When totally. I looked down um, Jersey Beauty companies, every now and again, I I just take a random selection of the addresses that we send products out to. I'm just kind of curious where do we ship stuff to and all that sort of stuff. And every now and again, you do see a name that you recognise. And you're like, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm probably not. <laughs> Dry surprised. skin would never have guessed. Yes. <laughs> oh, I wonder if I. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, but never being one to tell, uh, we just keep it to ourselves, which is fine. Yeah. Um, but okay. I, I guess if Boris has put your details all over Twitter, then you're fine telling the world, right? So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's just the way it works, which is great. So the uh, the business that you've got, you're, you're based in Exbridge, but you've got this business uh, called UXB Skincare. How did you get into that? Um, well, I've, I've always been a bit of a kind of side hustle kind of kind of guy. And, um, you know, I got a bit fed up with like doing little things like affiliate marketing, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, I wanted to do a physical product, um, but I didn't know what to do. So um, I was actually in Turkey in like 2016 17 i think it was 16 and um come out of a turkish bath and just felt amazing Mm -hmm. and they sell you a load of soaps and and stuff and and i bought a load and these soaps are supposed to do things you know one had carrot seed oil it's meant to be good for, good for sunburn argan oil very moisturizing that kind of thing and they, they actually worked so um i thought this is it. This is you know they're selling tons of soap here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go home and learn how to make I'm soap. Literally clean up. I'm literally this. It's uh, it's it's all gonna be gravy from here with uh, my soap empire. So I came home and, and and learned how to make soap. First thing I learned how to make actually, um, and then during that soap my first soap course they said well no one's buying soap anymore so uh i thought well that's good um i better learn how to make something else so i learned how to make all of the the other kind of cleansers and um creams and lotions um that that you kind of need for a skincare line and um it's it's gone from there really but but at, at, at the heart of it is is my love of cleansing as skincare cleansing and an exfoliation as skincare so that's the kind of the kind of the brand is all around that so we sell mainly cleansers and soap and face masks exfoliating face masks and scrubs and that kind of thing okay and these are all products which you formulated yeah so i've i've it took me a while to learn how to make all this stuff so that was the eureka moment was 2016 so i didn't actually launch until 2018 with just some cleansers um and yeah all all of the all of the 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 brand is based around kind of four formulas um for different skin types so you know dry oily um polluted and um kind of mature combi skin so yeah my my skin (laughs) which one (laughs) <laughs> yeah so it's got a lovely bit of rose hip in there but the um my sister-in-law is actually a herbalist so she she kind of told me which which herbs to use and stuff yeah. so um that informed it but yeah i formulated everything and got it all through testing and that kind of stuff so i've learned quite a, quite a bit on this journey about how to make skincare very good okay now when i look down here i'm not ignoring you i'm actually making notes uh, in my little I'm an analog guy in a digital world. Uh, digital world. Yeah, no, and, me too. Uh, I I just make lots of notes as we go along, which is great. So you're you've developed these skincare products out of um, a eureka moment from a Turkish bath. We've all had eureka moments in Turkish baths, um, <laughs> and um, yeah. and so you've developed these products, which is fabulous. And so this formulation, this developing products, has that become more than a hobby is it become a passion and an area of expertise now i totally i mean i'm 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 on a member of many many skincare fa- facebook groups uh i'm a member of a formulators group uh, so i do 
keep an eye out on the industry and you know the the trending kind of ingredients that kind of thing and and i do do know quite a lot about skincare now which um (laughs) i wouldn't have thought i would do like two two years ago so um yeah it's uh if uh if you want me to talk bore you to death about you know alpha hydroxy acids uh, uh, then i could but yeah let's not do that (laughs) <laughs> so yeah it's it's just it has become a bit of a, a bit of a passion and i do like talking about it actually mm-hmm. um but um yeah it's 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 not really my background at all i, I, I didn't I, you know i was product management and digital kind of background so this is a bit of a whenever i tell people about this they're a bit like what really? yeah, yeah it's quite fascinating. Yeah. to be yeah. fair i can empathize because one of my websites is called jersey beauty company which is a you know the clues in the title it sells beauty products and never once in my uh, years at school, you know, when you go see the careers advisor and he says to you, Matt, what do you want to do when you grow up? Never once did I sit there and say to him, I want to be the king of beauty. Just, <laughs> just no. never, that conversation never happened. Do you know what I mean? And so um, yeah. I always wanted to be a lawyer or an accountant. In fact, I did accountancy and law at university. And, okay. Uh, somehow ended up with an online beauty business. You know, it's quite a fascinating yeah. turn of events, isn't it? And so yeah uh, it's quite an intriguing industry to be in um super super competitive um, mm. but absolutely yeah. fascinating nonetheless so, so yeah what are things up to for uh, right now for you so you formulated these products um where where is it where are you at right now as a business so um i formulated them and uh I put a website up, but I didn't do anything with it for about a year. So for the last year, I've been selling at um, markets and affairs. So face-to-face selling, really. Yeah. Um, the, the website was just ticking over, you know, did a sale every now and again. So at the start of 2020, I sort of resigned myself to 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 put some effort into it do some advertising and uh see if i could start selling direct to consumers yeah so there's a few kind of full starts there um i I sort of decided that i was going to do facebook advertising yep start sending some traffic to the website um of course i know know nothing about facebook advertising um so i've joined amanda perry's um facebook advertising group and i'm sort of learning about top of funnel middle of funnel sort of stuff um and i'm just trying to nail the creative and and the offers and and try and and try and get people to the website and get it converting so at the moment i'm i'm kind of getting like a hundred people in the door every day and then selling one thing a day um so one percent conversion rate so so I'm thinking people are coming to your website, one person's buying and the hundred people that are coming to your website, are they, they're not coming through this Facebook advertising right now. They are. Well, some of them are, okay. the majority are majority of them are coming from Facebook. Yeah. They're coming from that and Google shopping. Um, so I've got a Google shopping feed up, but that's all I'm doing at the moment. Um, and I'm sending them, th- them to a landing page. Um, cause, I figured that would be um, the best thing to do rather than a, a category page on, on Shopify because yeah. um, it's fairly bland. Um, and I, I tried to put everything on, on, on the landing page that I thought would get them to convert, but um, I don't know if it's actually working, okay. um, to be honest. Right. So there's a few things there that I want to just drill down into a little bit and then we'll get onto your website. Uh, you use the Shopify platform. Um, yeah. And if I can ask, why did you choose Shopify? Um, it was just, I, I did a little bit of research and there was Magento and Shopify and it just seemed like the easiest what, easiest thing to use. Um, so, yeah. And was it Shopify that got you thinking about Facebook advertising? Uh, a little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm a member of a, a, a subreddit called Shopify whatever it is and um everyone on there seems to be um used to, it seems to be a one-two combo of shopify and facebook ads yeah. uh, and you'll be an instant millionaire so <laughs> it's not worth really that easy <laughs> let me tell you if there was one um thing i and i've 
coached a lot of people who have Shopify sites. And I, in fact, I've had a lot of Shopify sites myself, so I know the platform well and think it's a great platform. So this is not me having to go at Shopify. But one of the things that Shopify does do, I think, to people that buy the Shopify platform is it funnels you down this idea of Facebook advertising being one of the key sources of traffic. Um, and so a lot of Shopify people are on Facebook uh, and they're using Facebook advertising, spend quite a bit of money on Facebook advertising and learning Facebook advertising um, and uh, sending a lot of traffic to their website, but not really converting. And so when you look at the Shopify forum, for example, uh, I did this uh, last year, I looked on their forum and saw that the biggest category outside of just how you use Shopify is I'm getting traffic, but I'm not getting sales. Can you please help me? And it seems to be a common cry, I think, on the Shopify websites um, because they do take you down this sort of formula of have a Shopify site, mm-hmm. do some Facebook advertising, and all the world is going to be good. Turns right. out it's not actually that straightforward or simple, um, as uh, a lot of people finding out. So that was the reason that I asked. Um, it's not a common problem is, a, is basically what I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems to yeah. be fairly, fairly common. Um, so whenever talking to people about um, that issue of conversion, I've got the Shopify site and no one's buying. The first place I always talk to, the first thing we always do before we look at their website is look at their product um, and try and understand, is this a product people actually want to buy? Is this what we call, do you know what I mean? It's... um. I guess the common thing that I see is people going to AliExpress um, and uh, they'll buy some smartwatch for like six bucks and sell it on their website for 30 bucks and do Facebook advertising and try and get people to buy this watch, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Which, or you know, jewelry or clothing seems to be really popular ones um, that you buy from AliExpress and almost like a drop shipping type arrangement. Yeah. Um, and so that's the first major hurdle right there because, you know what, unless you've got a product that's distinctive, why are they going to buy from you? Um, especially because I can pretty much guarantee their Shopify website's going to look rubbish because they're, they're new to the industry and they don't know what they're doing. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. they're on a losing battle. So the, the first thing to any good e-commerce business is a phenomenal product, right? Yeah. Now, the reason I just clarified a few things earlier is I don't think we need to talk about the product because I'm sure your product is great. And you are definitely passionate about it. And the other thing that you have is you have a unique knowledge of that product. Okay. Yep. Um, so when we talk about moisturizers and cleansers, you have a, an insight and a passion that very, very few people have. Do you see what mm. I mean? And so you can bring yep. that to your website. And this is one of the ways that you're going to differentiate yourself, say, from Amazon um, is because Amazon is a as a commodities trader basically you're going to put the product on the website people buy it or they won't and the you know the sales copy will try and convince them um but the reason people buy from you is not just the product it's the person behind the product it's the story behind the product it's the experience behind the product it's the education and the information um and so on and so forth do you see what i mean and it's it's yeah. how do you do that so okay um so you've got this product so i don't we'll talk about that a little bit but not lots um, okay The second thing uh, we obviously then have to look at is your website. Um, You are on the Shopify platform, which is usually pretty stable and people are familiar with it. But again, it does follow a particular pattern, which I don't find is that helpful. Um, So what I'm going to suggest we do is we're going to jump onto your website now. So if people are watching on the video, um, then you'll be able to see what I see. If you're not watching on the video, I will describe what it is that I see. So hopefully you can follow along. Um, now, the video, if you're listening to this on the audio and you'd like to see the video, the video will be on my website at mattedmondson.com and you will be able to see that. If you're watching on Facebook Live, you're just going to follow along anyway. The video after the Facebook Live will stay on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, you can also check it out there. Okay, so let's bring up your website. So um, I appreciate some. And whilst everybody else can see this, you can't see your website. Um, or can't see what I'm seeing. So uh, there's a slight technical barrier there, but let's try our best and see how we're getting on. So I'm on the homepage of uxbskincare.com, uh, uniform x-ray bravo skincare.com. Uh, I guess my first question is actually, where did the where did the name come from? Um, 
<laughs> it's 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 basically uh, part of our um, a shortened version of Uxbridge because um, uh, it just okay. seemed that yeah every 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 kind of skin like oldy worldy soap skincare brand seemed to be either a location um, or some made up Victorian sounding name so I just thought I'd go with UXB and that's a turns out was a bit was quite poorly chosen name because it also stands for unexploded bomb (laughs) um so but the um so I do get outranked by um by a, a, so if old... I go to Google, in fact, I'm going to try it now. Hang on, I'm just going to go to Google. I do... <laughs> yeah, I bought, I bought the, <laughs> I bought UXB as a, a as an ad, a, ad, a Google ad. But um, but one of the things that um, danger, I did do, UXB, what... yeah, the first thing that comes up says danger UXB. <laughs> that's yeah, a, that's not a good association, is it? Really, with the pro- have you thought about yeah. changing the name, or is it is it just literally too far down the line? It's a little bit too. I mean, I, I've got labels and everything now. It's, uh, but I mean, y- youngsters who seem to be the people buying this don't don't really understand about um, about the the unexploded bomb thing. Um, but yeah, it's I, I did one of my best sellers when I was doing markets was bath bombs. So I did used to just did used to sell bath bombs. I don't sell them on the website, but yeah, you could yeah, get a lot of trouble, I suppose. Okay, yeah. Um, Okay, well, the name is what it is, right? Uh, we could talk about whether Uxbridge would be a better name, whether you can rename it at some point in the future, but that's not your key problem right now. Although when people go to Google and type in UXB and it says danger UXB is the first thing, that that you know that, that could be a bit of an issue. Yeah. So I have to be honest with you. Um, I've not looked at your website um, yet, other than a quick glance to make sure I've got the right domain name. Because the way I like to do this is I like to look at it like your first time visitor so I can tell you my instant reaction. Um, so I've not planned any of this out. But uh, if we if we go through it um, and I'll just say what I see and then we can talk about what that means. OK, so okay. on the home page, um, I've got uh, the banner at the top, which is free shipping until we beat COVID-19, which is great. Um We've got the UXB logo underneath that. We have your main navigation, home, shower cream, shave cream, body scrubs, cream cleansers, face masks, soaps, bath salts, home facial kits. And to the right of your logo, we've got some social media, different currencies and the standard shopping cart stuff. And then I see a photo which is cut off halfway through of a lady's face, which I assume is a mud pack on her face. Although it could, the way I'm looking at this picture, it could be anything. And I'm, hoping, I'm literally <laughs> hoping it's not what I think it is. Um, and it says, home facial kits, spa quality facials in your home, home find out more. Uh, I'm scrolling down. I see more of the lady. Uh, and then we go to your cream cleansers, your shower cream, shave creams, got your products on there. Okay. Okay. So... Let's deal first and foremost then uh, right at the top and we'll go down bit by bit. The first thing I'd say is your logo, um, UXB, the application of nature, takes up way too much real estate space on the screen. It's too big. Um, Now, this may seem like a little bit pedantic uh, and it may be the limitation that you face on the um, Shopify theme. Um, But if I look at it on... Uh, let me just bring the camera back up here so people can see what's going on. In fact, I'll go to me here. What I didn't do and what I should have done maybe is connected my phone to this whole system so you could see the phone. But if I look on a mobile browser, um, you can hopefully see there that your logo takes up almost half of the, by the time you've got to that mask image, it's, yep. it's almost half of the screen. Do you see what I yep. mean? Yeah. So um, the first thing, I, whilst you understand this is not a big deal in, in a lot of people's heads, in my head it is because it takes up a lot of unnecessary space, which means people have to scroll. And as okay. everything we can get in the first fold of the screen mm-hmm. um, that makes sense for our customers, the better. Okay. And that has to be simple and clean looking. Um, and with all due respect to your UXP brand and name and all that sort of stuff, no one gives a flying flip about your logo. They just don't. You've never gone onto a website and gone, oh, that's a lovely logo. 
You just, okay. you just, I'm going to buy now because that logo is lovely. You, know what I mean? <laughs> you, d- you just don't yeah. do it, but you, it does help you get a better feel about the website. Um, yeah. but I think your logo uh, should be at least half of the size that it currently is. Um, big enough to okay. read so people know what it is. The application of nature trademark, you can make that text bigger. Um, but the UXB side of it, you could definitely make smaller. Okay. Now, um, there's a golden rule uh, in any e-commerce website that is in the first few seconds, somebody coming to your website must know exactly what your website is, what it's about and what it's offering. And um, so UXB, the application of nature, doesn't tell me that you're a skincare brand. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Um, so you've, I see the home facial kits, spa quality facials in your own home but that text is faded given the size of my screen and the colors of the background image a little bit. Yeah. So it's not as straightforward to read. Um, and bearing in mind, I'm an old man with failing eyesight, right? So <laughs> <laughs> maybe not your target market. Um, so you've got to instantly with text and headers, make it really clear what the website's about, how you're going to change the person's life that's come into the website and how they get started. Those three questions, right? Um, so I think, the what i would do is i i would have you um use the word skincare um somewhere on the screen very quickly um you know the application of nature is great but again it's quite it's quite flowery language and it doesn't tell people straight away what it is okay um so you're going to have a lot of let's say you move your logo to the left um, yep. and you shrink it down. You're going to have a lot of white space between your logo and the icons on the right. That would be a great place to put, um, you know, uh, skincare and some kind of uh, nice headline like skincare, natural skincare, take okay. to your skin or, do you know what I mean, something yeah, yeah. really um, fun, but, you know, super clear. Yeah. So next I come across uh, these icons on the right. Social media icons shouldn't be here. They should be in the footer. It's where people expect them to be. So just move your Facebook, okay. YouTube, and Instagram down to the bottom. Okay. Um, now, the GPP and you sell in different currencies is not actually true with Shopify, and this is one of the problems with Shopify's multi-currency. Let's say I come across here and I click uh, US dollars, and it shows me all of your prices then, I'm assuming, in US dollars. Yes, it does. Um I don't actually buy in US dollars. This is one of these common sort of things with Shopify. Um, It charges you still in sterling. Um, So let's say it's £10 on your website and you showed us $12. It will charge the client £10 sterling, which equates to about $12. But there's going to be the foreign currency fee. Right. Um, And so you'll, I don't know how many international customers you've got. but that's something that I, I hear a lot of complaints about. I don't know if you've had any issues with that. Okay. Yeah, we do have a, f- a few international. Um, I'm not shipping internationally at the moment because of um, coronavirus, mm-hmm. but um, not had any any particular um, comments about it, but then I've not had that many orders. So Okay. It's just something to watch. Um, okay. I, I, for me, I, I think if you're going to do multi-currency, do multi-currency. Um, as in if I buy in dollars, I actually buy in dollars. I don't buy in sterling right. still. Um, and so okay. we've shipped products all over the world and using Shopify initially with the multi-currency thing, and it was one of the biggest complaints that we had. So, oh, really? Um, yeah, really. And and this was when the international market grew quite a bit. So right. um, you've got your, you know, your account and shopping cart icons on the right-hand side. That's fine where they are. Let's talk about your main navigation. Um, you don't need home the home link in the main navigation. Let me share the screen here with the video viewers. So this link here where it says home, everybody knows if they click your logo, it's going to take them to the home page. So you can lose that. And again, it just simplifies it. Gotcha. Um, the shower cream, shave cream, body scrubs, cream cleansers, face masks, soaps, bath salts, home facial kits. That's all great. Um, I would just, I don't know how much control you've got over the design. I just think they need to be clearer. Um, in color so i'd probably make them a much darker gray so they, they stand okay out a bit more. Um, yeah let's talk about your hero image here is this actually a stock photo or is this yeah it's a, it's a kind of bash together of two stock photos yeah um, yeah yeah so um 
when it comes to hero images, let's talk about those because I think people um, often fall down here. Um, so when it comes to hero images, you've got to ask yourself one question. Who is my target audience for this product, right? Who am I wanting to reach? So if I'm going to use a person shot or a people shot, um, I have to make sure that that photograph resembles my target market. Right. Does that make sense? So um, on Jersey, for example, we never really in a hero image would put a photograph of me or men because, you know, men make up 3% of our customers, whereas 97% of them are female. So we're always going to yeah. show female. And the typical age range of our customers is um, in their 40s and 50s. So we try and use more images of people in their 40s and 50s. Right. The other thing that I've found is... Um, because you are, um, you're the, you're the manufacturer. You're the guy with the passion. You're the, you're the story behind the brand. Okay, and, and what I mean by that is, there's ten thousand moisturizers out there, right? I know because I sell most of them on the website, right? So there's <laughs> thousands of the flipping things. Yeah. Um. So you understanding how you differentiate is critical. Okay. And I don't think, if I'm being totally blunt and honest, you're differentiating with this image. Because no. I can go on any beauty site and see a similar sort of image with a similar sort of headline saying a similar sort of thing. Yeah. And so because I don't know your brand, um, I guess the question is going to be, how do I, why would I, why would I buy that? Over, over over the 10,000 other websites that I'm just about to go and click on to to see what's what's different about it. And okay. for me, um, the difference is not nature. It's not the ingredients because every man and his dog is arguing the ingredients. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? For me, the, the differentiators are going to be the problems that you solve and you, the story as to why you've created what you've created. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. And so... Um, I don't know whether it would work, but I'd almost be wanting to test going back against my previous argument, whether actually the hero image of you in a lab coat would be better than the image you've got here, because especially with some kind of quote or story as to, um, hi, I'm Simon. And I don't know about you, but I really struggled with dry skin and it wasn't until I had my aha moment in a Turkish, Turkish bath um, mm. five years ago that I really started to understand that actually the ingredients in the skincare make all of the difference. And you choose, you know, I, I researched it to the hill. I went and learned and got educated. And I figured out actually to solve this problem, 98% of moisturizers are not adequate to cope with it because they're missing yeah. the key ingredients, right? Now, okay. that... You know, obviously, it's got to be true. I'm just making this up as I go. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. that that element of um, if I had a photo of you um, with that by the side, all of a sudden, I know what the site's about. I know what you're about, and I know why you're making a difference. You're telling me that 98% of moisturizers is not going to solve my problem for dry skin, but yours will, right? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's different, and that differentiates you. And I think for me. Um, this website um, is as there's nothing about your website that makes it different from any other e-commerce website that I've seen. Um, and so you're going to have a very high bounce rate. You're going to have very low conversion rates because you're not drawing the people in. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. I was, uh, I, I think that's probably m my problem is I'm, I'm trying to copy successful people rather than following my own path type thing. Um, and as you were saying that about you know real real people, um, I took some pictures of my wife. If you clicked on that hero, it would take you through to another landing page for the, my kind of spa kits. And I put some pictures of my wife at the bottom there, trying out the the kind of cleanser and the and the mask down down the bottom bottom of that page and um i was thinking maybe a picture of her holding them or both of us maybe holding them because it's a kind of a small british family made business we hand make cosmetics in west london so i'm thinking maybe yeah a bit more 
bit more of our story. I think you're right. It does. It, it does look a bit samey. Mm. It does look a bit. It's, it's trying to. It's trying to be. You know, follow follow the leader type thing. Where whereas we've got a bit more leverage in our story. You're right. So I'll do yeah. something about that. Yeah, totally. Because when it's your story, no one else can copy that. Yeah, and that's, um, that's what differentiates you. Do you see what totally. I mean? It's totally what yeah, differentiates yeah. you. So don't be yeah. afraid of who you are. Don't be. Don't try and be something that you're not. Um, yeah. Celebrate the fact that you're not actually Dermalogica. You're not a yeah. big American corporation with you know shareholders wanting their pound of flesh because they're now owned by Unilever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're, yeah. you're yeah. not those. You're not. Um, you're not L'Oreal. You're not. We're not going to try and be L'Oreal because we. I, I'd find it yeah. kind of immoral to try and be like Laurie. Anyway, um, but do you know what I mean? It, just be yeah. who you are and tell your story and tell it well. Yeah. Um, and people will resonate with that. Not as many yeah. people as will resonate with L'Oreal, but you know what? You need a thousand customers who are buying from you on a regular basis. Um, yeah. yeah. And people will resonate with you and your story because that's much yeah. more interesting. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I think it's it's funny because I think people think we're a bigger brand than we actually are when they look at our products and they look at our website. So mm. I think, but maybe maybe that's I, I shouldn't be trying to be L'Oreal with their billion pound you know marketing budget. I should be saying that we kind of or showing even that we hand make this stuff in Uxbridge. So yeah, I think you're right. I think we we've gone the wrong the wrong direction there. Trying to be a bit samey and a bit trying to be L'Oreal when we're you know, twenty years, forty years behind L'Oreal. Yeah, I mean, so, if yeah. you get there, you know, just remember yeah. me. That's all I'm saying. But, um, <laughs> but I think you know, let's do it. Let's, let's see how it goes. Because if your conversions are low anyway, try it. You know, you've yeah. got nothing to lose in some respects. Yeah. And I think a good person to connect with here um, and understand this is there's a book called, and I don't have a copy. I'm looking up at my bookshelves. I don't have a copy here. It's called Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Oh, I have, I have read it, actually. Have you read it? Where he talks yeah. about um, when you tell a story, you're not the hero, the customer's the hero, you're the guy, yeah. you're the expert. And that's what you're trying to do here. Okay, so right. you're, you're taking your ideal customer, your avatar, let's call her Jane for the sake of argument, and Jane's coming to your website and you are telling a story which is going to resonate with her and you are going to help her solve her problems. Now, from my point of view, that I think, you know, there are a few companies now doing that well. So you take, some, you take a company like Jersey Beauty Company. Jersey Beauty Company started out um, in 2006, okay, in a very different time of the internet where you just put as many products on your website um, and, you know, you got as much traffic to your website and people bought them or they didn't, right? Um, you didn't need brand personality. You didn't need any of that sort of stuff. A lot of it back then was just anybody would buy anything because it was just new and fun and, and cool. Yep. Um, and we did well because we shipped from Jersey and there was good kudos shipping from Jersey and all that sort of stuff. If I was starting Jersey Beauty Company today, I would not do it the way that I've got it now. And this is a fundamental point that I, I, I think you need to understand because I don't want you to try and be like Jersey Beauty Company. Right. Um, I would very much go, you know what, we've got thousands of products and we ship them. We've got lots of great customers and that's great and that's fantastic. If I was starting a beauty website now, I would take 40 products, which were curated products, which I absolutely yeah. loved. I would be very, very clear on who my target market is, my target uh, demographic. If it was um, women that are your wife's age, maybe your wife should be the main face of the page. Um, uh, if I was doing a, a skincare brand for men, uh, then I would put my picture on. Do you know what I mean? And I would, yep. I would tell the story about how this couple from Uxbridge could not find what they needed um, in the crazy ingredients that the bigger brands seemed to put in them, and just could not justify spending sixty quid on a moisturizer when it just contained water and some coloring. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you can be as brutal as you like. Just tell the story honestly and openly. Um, but if okay. it was me, I'd be like, I would take 40 products. I would take some of the Dermalogica products, some of the Gino products. I would take the best ones that I could find and I would curate them. And, yeah. I, would, and I would be connecting with people who were my target audience, who liked the message that I had to say. I yeah. would stand for something. Um, 
and I would probably st- I would be very anti aging, very anti anti aging, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I would take a stand against something just because I think you need to have a clear message. But every single one of those products, okay, every single one of them would have a video of me talking about that product, why I love it, why I think it's brilliant, what it's going to do for you, how you're going to use it. Nobody in the world would do educational content better than me on those 40 products on my website. Right. Do you see what I mean? I've been meaning to do that. I've been, I've been so meaning to, to talk through the products because there's this, you know, there there is a um, there's a history to them. There's a reason why I made them. So, yeah, yeah. I should do that. I think it's so, so important because um, – because it's an unknown, it's a fa- it's a faceless brand, and people have to connect with you and, and buy you. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I, it, it's it's been a, a, a common. Um, the thing is, I don't look like you know a skincare brand owner, uh, but I did I did do a, a quick video of myself on the About Us page just just to put my face out there, to so people could know that they're buying from a person i didn't have a trouble selling face to face when i did markets mm. um but again i think i'm getting caught up in the kind of glamour of skincare and it has to be a you know a glamorous uh, female founder who's you know who did it because they hated essential oils or something um like you know dr- drunk elephant but um i'm i'm not you know, I'm not, I'm not that person. I'm a, no, no, I'm a so middle-aged right. bloke from West London. Yeah. Um, and so you, you've got to make that a strength. Yeah. Because fundamentally it's not your target audience. So because you're not your target audience, you've got to make that a strength for you. Um, I, I would test actually doing the videos with your wife just to see what the impact of that is, because obviously you're yeah. a partnership. So why not? Um, yeah. But she I, does sell more than me. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I think, Actually, if you can get your wife on the camera and you're the guy behind the camera saying, mm. ask, asking her questions, because I think you put a camera in someone's face and they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But it's like now you've got a camera, I've got a camera, but we forget about the camera. We just have a conversation. Okay. And so if you can hold a camera on your wife and have a conversation mm-hmm. with her and ask her, you know, pointed questions, but at the same yeah. time record it. Okay. You've got everything you need, right? And you put okay. the bite-sized snippets on the video, yeah. away you go. So okay. um, if I – let me just go back to your website. So if I go back um, to – let's have a look. Let's figure out So your best-selling product on your website is your frankincense and argan oil and shower moisturizer. Is that right? It's not. No, um, that is a plugin from Shopify. Who's randomly picking something? I think. Um, so it's cool. I can't remember the name of the plugin, but it's meant to be AI. I don't think it is. No, I don't and think it's helping you. <laughs> um, no, I might remove it. So. Well, let's just take this as an example. So we've got frankincense and argan oil in shower moisturizer for every for very dry skin, right? Um, yeah. And so then we've got add to cart. We've got some text, which is great. We've just got one picture. I would suggest um, that you take photographs of um, both the front of the bottle, the back, showing the label, the contents of the label when it comes to beauty. You'll notice we've done this on Joe's Beauty Company, actually. Okay. And actually also take does it come in a box? No. No. So um, just, sh- just show on or say on there, you know, no outer packaging because we're not trying to destroy the environment, right? Or, or whatever your, yeah. your reasoning is. Again, make it a positive uh, would be my advice. Okay. So right. um, we've got the text, the scent, usage, ingredients. You've got two reviews, which is great, and then frequently bought together. So the pictures of the nuts and the seeds uh, and the dash of white cream make no sense to me whatsoever. So I would get rid of those. Um, yeah. I would have pictures of the product, you know, front and back. I would probably yeah. get a picture of your wife holding the product. Um, yeah. Get a picture of your wife putting the product in her hand um, and get a picture of your wife using the product if it's a facial product or something like that. Obviously, if it's a shower product, yeah. be sensitive. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> is what I'm going to say there. So, um, okay. Does that make sense? 
Um, yeah. Just again, it gives people context to understand it. And you need on that page, you don't need the Facebook share, the tweet and the pin it things. They're a waste of time. What you do need on that page is a picture of your wife going, why we made this product. And as she's just talking about why this product's so amazing, it's even better if it's on video and she's talking about it, saying this product is fantastic and it's going to do this, this, this and this for you. Um, you okay. Do you do your money back guarantee? Yeah, we do. Um... So I've made it more prominent on the cleansers. There's a 30 day kind of, if your skin doesn't look better after 30 days, we'll give you your money back. Um, so yeah, I, I was getting around to putting it on all pages, but if you went to one of the cleanser pages, then you would see this kind of big banner saying 30 days. It's a better skin. Yeah. Your money I back. definitely would be putting that on there in, in, in no uncertain terms. And yeah. I think the other thing that I would do is, um, I, I don't know if you can offer um, samples. Yeah, I mean, I know it's I know it's massive in beauty, but I haven't I haven't actually got round to making any kind of sample size. Or could you make a smaller sample kit that somebody buys for like ten quid and then yeah like ten quid off their first purchase on your website? So they pay for it, but they don't really pay for it if they love it and buy it again yeah like a like a yeah like a try it kind of try a bit of everything yeah we've done it in the past where we've put kits together small kits that maybe have 30 quids worth of product in there and we sell it for 9.99 as an offer and then we okay. say listen if you buy these products um try them out we just want people to get used to using jersey beauty company to be fair then we right. will give you a voucher for 10 pounds to spend on our website so although you are buying these products for 10 pounds you'll get a voucher for ten pounds, and you can spend that on the on the website. Do you see what I mean? So it just stops the time wasters and the freeloading. Um, hey. But it, it it people look at that and go, okay, well I'll spend ten quid. And if the products are good, that's awesome because I'll get the ten quid and I'll be able to buy their products with that ten quid on as a gift voucher. That's a good idea. Yeah. So that that does work super well. The other thing that I think you have to do um, on every single product, uh, if you want me to give you a piece of homework or a goal, um, okay, that is. I would make sure I have at least five reviews per product. Okay. And if that means you've got to give it to your mum, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your cat and your dog, um, yep. just go and give away some free product. Um, put it on your Instagram, put it on your YouTube and say, listen, we're giving free product away. We just want people to write some honest reviews on the website. Do it. Um, make sure they're genuine reviews. I mean, I joke about your mum and your, your, your aunt, but make sure they're yep. genuine reviews. Okay. Um, when you're selling it at the fairs, you know, face to face, which you obviously can't do now, but when you do, I yeah. would be giving them a postcard which says, listen, write a review of this product on the website. And when you do, you get X, whatever X okay. is, a five pound voucher or for more product or something like that. Um, and have a very, very clear review strategy because okay. I, think, I think that's going to be really, really helpful. Okay. That's good. These are all organic by, it's a plugin called Judge Me. Um, that goes and emails customers yeah. when they bought. But yeah, no, that should great. be a bit more but if I look proactive. At, if I look at the, you see, think about this from your buyer's point of view, right? I've come onto your website and I'm on your frankincense page, which apparently is your bestseller. And I go, it's, got, it's only got two reviews. So automatically you're a small site trying to look like a big site. Yeah. Um, but if you'd have made a play on the fact that you're a small company on the start, that wouldn't have bothered me. Okay. Um, but I look at your reviews and I see that one was rev written the 1st of February 2018 and the other one was the 3rd of May oh actually it's the American date isn't it so March 5th 2020 and January 2nd 2018 that's a big old gap between those do you see what I mean and so that yeah that just makes me as a consumer go what's going on and so yeah. what you want to do is maintain those regular reviews that are, are quite up to date and modern um, okay and so doing what you can to get those reviews out of people um, really needs to be hype your strategy because it's that social proof that yeah. know, when someone comes to your website, they're more likely to buy. Okay. Um, and that's the kind of thing that you, you, you really need to be doing. Gotcha. Thank so you. So let's, um, let me pull up the website here and let's look at your landing page because I know that was something that you mentioned to me. Now this is what you're sending people to from your Facebook ads and I'm on uxbskincare.com forward slash pages forward slash cream hyphen cleansers. Yeah. Um, and 
obviously I've not done anything for a little while. So it's come up with this little get 15% off your first purchase, just enter your email address. Does that work for you? Not really. Uh, I do. I mean, every now and again, I get a, a, a purchase where I see the, the discount code, but not mm. not overly. I don't think I get that goes to Clavio. And I don't think I get many email addresses through that little pop up. OK, so let's look at your landing page again. Let's just take it as read that the logo is too big and you need to do a bit of work with the main navigation. So let's go to your hero free mailing March free two day delivery. Um, I think mailing just needs to be clearer um, and I would separate it out from your your image. Again, that's just a standard stock image. UXB um, yeah. cleanser is the quickest way to fresh glowing skin. I honestly, again, here you've got to stand out and you've got to be different. This is where you need the picture of your wife holding the bottle saying, you know what, 90, 98% of cleansers failed me. Um, I couldn't find a way to get that fresh glowing skin that I needed. Um, yeah. And in fact, I'll show you a way and we'll come back to it. Let me make a note here. I'll show you a way of how to get exactly the right language um, to use in the hero images here. Okay. Um, so change that hero image, make it your wife, make some dramatic statement headline that is true. Okay. Okay. Um, then you've got, your cleansers you've got four cleansers so you want i think and then you've got videos at the bottom the videos for me are your social proof they need to be much higher so i'd have your wife the text and then yeah. i'd have a video and next yeah. to the video i'd have a, a bit of text saying this is kimberly or whatever her name is um, yeah. and a quote from kimberly so people if they don't want to watch the video for whatever reason they can't they can still get a gist of what's in it okay Do you see what I mean? yeah 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 then you've got the products um nourishing and moisturizing uh rose sip um and comfrey cream cleanser i think get rid of the rose hip rose water even in primrose pictures on the products doesn't doesn't help them just makes it feel cluttered and okay. again, I would have your wife holding, I'd have a picture of your wife holding it. Okay. Do you know what I mean? And the next one, I'd maybe have a picture of your wife holding it, but pouring it in her hand. So they're different poses. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tying this product in with, with you and a family. Um, and then we come to your bullet points. Um, so luxury oil brand that supports dry and combi skin, supportive of mature skin, leaves the skin feeling fresh and soft. So again, um, 14 pounds introductory offer doesn't really make any sense to me. Uh, I look at that and kind of go, what does that mean? Does that mean it's 14 pounds? It means 14 pounds off. Um, I don't actually know what the retail price is. Click here to find out more. And then that takes me to your cleanser page where you've got your 30 day challenge, which is cool. And you've got the videos. You've got even more videos there, which is fantastic. Um, so I would, yeah, definitely be trying. Um, the other thing that you could do uh, which I've seen work super well, um, is not go direct to selling product. Um, so if I, if I pick out one of your cleansers here, let's say your oily and acne prone skin. So you've got the brown rice, milk and honey cleanser, right? Yeah. I would almost be like, um, I'd do a bit of search engine optimize i do a bit of seo research keyword research um, and i'll show you in a minute like i say a, a way to do this a little bit and okay. I'd, I'd find out i'd go right for this so this is for oily and acne prone skin so what are people typing into the search engine they've got acne prone skin it's like it'll be what's the best cleanser for my acne prone skin i would almost do um an article uh that says on my facebook ad would almost say listen um, I am going to, uh, this is hands down the best cleanser for acne prone skin guaranteed or that's selling the product. Sorry. Let me start that again. So do an article. What are the top five cleansers for acne prone skin? Okay. Um, click here to find out more. Right. Yeah. And then you start off with a picture of your wife. Um, sorry, what's her name? Liz. Yeah. Um, she goes, Hey, I'm Liz. Um, I'm, 35 years old or however old she is. And you know what? I've struggled with acne prone skin all my life. And so I've been on 
uh, hunt for acne prone skin uh, cleansers to help calm this for as long as I can remember. Um, yep. Here are my top five tips. And um, if you read to the end, I'm going to give you one bonus tip as, that trumps all the other five. Right? Okay. And so she can talk about, um, I don't know, whichever cleansers that she likes, which aren't yours, yeah. right? Because you, you're, it's an educational thing. And at the end, she can say, but ultimately when it came down to it, they still weren't great. And so my best ever cleanser, bizarrely, is one that I've made. Um, and I think it's, you know, fantastic. And it solved this problem, this problem, this problem. Here's what Susan said from wherever and Sharon yeah. said from wherever. And there's some gotcha. videos here. Um, if you want to find out more about this cleanser, click here. Um, and you can go to our website and you can trial it free for 30 days um, on me. Just put this code Liz into it and get five quid off or whatever. Um, okay. So you're not advertising products, you're adver advertising content, um, uh -huh. educational content. So your Facebook ad is the top five best cleansers to deal with um, acne prone skin. Yeah. And again, that information would come out of the research uh, okay. that I would do to try and find that out. And I would yep. test this. So you would do Facebook ads direct to your product pages. You'd do Facebook ads direct to your landing page here, make the changes yep. that we talked about. And then do Facebook ads that go to an educational page, and then the educational page goes to the products. Okay. Okay. Um, yep. And see what kind of benefit you get from both, uh, from all three, and just run a Facebook ad that says, right, if they've read through this content and they've clicked through to the cleanser, yep. then we can remarket them with these ads here. Gotcha. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you'll, you'll, you should find um, – if you test all three, you'll find which works the best for you. I have a gut feeling as to which will work best, just based on experience. Okay. But until you test it, yeah. you never know, right? Yeah, totally. Have you got any all questions right. on that? I feel like I've just gone off on one. No, no, it, it's um, it 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 makes sense. Um, I think as I've been learning about funnels and 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 how people kind of get to know a brand and don't buy directly, you know, off of like buy this. I think it makes a lot of sense um, to just to warm them up with a bit of educational content and then eventually get them to, to buy. So it makes it makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, yeah, totally. So we've done this really well with Jersey Beauty Company. Um, we have put out educational content, which have, has been around um, solving problems. So there's a blog post, which I'm just going to pull up, which you can't see, uh, but I'll show it to everybody else here. Um, he says, let me press the right button. There we go. <laughs> so this is a blog post on the current Jersey site. Um, we are just about to move to a new site actually, but that's another story. Uh, and in here, open pores, everything you need to know about open pores. And we wrote a blog post. What are open pores? Why do I have open pores? Are open pores genetic? What's the treatment for open pores? And we've referred to some of the products that we sell on the website. Um, and we right. lead them down certain sort of avenues and this educational content type thing is yeah. is easy to advertise in some respects because because again you're different every man and his dog trying to sell a product talk yeah. about why they might want your product first and win them yeah over, do you know what i mean and people will connect with you i was thinking about building a kind of skin quiz um like a diagnosis fill in a few things about your lifestyle and, and it will tell you what type of skin you've got just as a method to kind of engage with people and maybe gather some email addresses so maybe i'll i'll do something like that as well yeah um, have a play we did something called the skin profile um so yeah. you went online asked a, you know we asked you a bunch of questions and it created a skin profile based on those questions like a therapist would and we emailed you a PDF with your skin prescription, in effect, what your skin's like, why it's like the way it's like, how you solve those kind of problems, not just with the products that we sell, but, you know, with nutrition and all that sort of stuff and what you can do to solve some of those problems. And that worked very, very well as an email generation tool to get people's right. email addresses. So, um, yeah, by all means play around it. I think at the first instance, I would just write three or four well-targeted blog posts and have, yeah. that are you know, would make sense for your products because they're much easier to, to write yeah. and then do landing pages around that and then try some of the Facebook ads towards those. Okay. Does that make cool. sense? Are we, are we all good so far? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Making notes. Yes. So here's, here's my little trick on how to ascertain what kind of language to use and what kind of questions people are asking. 
Okay, and again, it's okay. a shame you can't see my screen, uh, but everybody else, uh, let me just get it up here. Um, and cleansers, let's look at cleansers for, uh, can't even type, acne prone skin. Okay, so oh, let me put the screen on. Here we go. So if you're watching this, you'll see that I am on Amazon's website. And I have gone to uh, the search bar and I've put in here cleanser for acne prone skin. Um, and so Simon, just follow along verbally. And if anything yep. that I say doesn't make sense, let me know because it means it won't make sense for the people on the podcast as well. well um, but you can also watch this at a later date. So I'm just scrolling down yep. and there are hundreds and hundreds of products. Okay. Uh, all to do with acne prone skin. Uh, so let's look at the top. The first one that comes up is a face wash with tree, tree, can't even say it, tea tree oil. This is a sponsored listing and it's got 66 uh, reviews and it's 11 pounds. So I'm just sort of scrolling across and then I see Ketafil, uh oily skin cleanser um, and that's got 1400 reviews and then I see Garnier Skin Active um, micellar water facial cleanser sensitive skin uh five pounds so these are best sellers here so i'm just going to click on the first one uh the ketophil cleansing skin a uh, gentle skin cleanser mm -hmm. um, none of them have mentioned the word acne in their title which i find quite interesting um i would definitely be changing that on uh, Amazon, that's for sure. And then they've got, you know, the usual, um, I've clicked through to the product page, they've got the usual um, sort of thing going on here. They've got a bit about the skin cleanser. Love your skin with these three easy steps. Step one, cleanse. Step two, moisturize. Step three, moisturize your body. Um, as an aside, uh, Simon, on, your, on each product page, you need a video telling people how to use your product, okay. showing them how your wife uses it. Uh, it may be obvious to you how you use a cleanser. You put it in your hand, lather it up, put it on your face, but you'll be amazed how many people want to actually see that. Yep. Um, so I'm just looking down. This is the number one seller uh, in cleansing gels and foams. So what you find on Amazon is they have a question and answer session, uh, a section, not session, a section for questions and answers. So question number one, can Ketafil be used on the eyes without sting, etc.? Now, I look at that and go, wow, this is a question that somebody's actually wanting to know the answer to. So I'd be like, on, my, on, the, on the content of my cleanser page, I'd be like, yeah. you know what, if you get this into the eyes, just rinse it out. But it doesn't really sting because it's made with all natural ingredients. Okay. Do you see what I mean? So already I've got, I've got an idea of what kind of content I want to put on there. How long does one bottle last using it twice a day? Common question, right, about beauty products that no beauty site ever puts on there. Yeah, don't have so, a thought about that. Yeah. Um, how how long is it going to last for? Well, let's give them that information. And this is all kind of stuff your wife could talk about in a video as well as writing it down. Um, so another question, is it gentle enough to use around the eye area? Um, can this be used as a substitute to shower gel or soap? Okay, now right. these questions may be really obvious to you, but not to these guys. And then I go into the reviews. OK, and the first review comes up from a student living on a budget, which is such a great name if you're listening, student living on a budget. And they've given it one star out of five with a headline product is diluted. Um, and they put here, I normally buy Ketafil Gentle Skin Cleanser at a shop nearby Boots, Superdrug, etc. for the past five years until last month because I decided to give Amazon a go uh, with this seller for a large size. This isn't the same product and I'm used to that I'm used to and the product has been tampered with, it's been diluted and the consistency isn't the same before. The original product bought at stores is more viscous and it doesn't have a glitter look to it. After reading the past comments, this is not the first complaint or a diluted product. What that tells me is, um, and again, just from my experience in the beauty industry, uh, people are absolutely scared about genuine products. Has it been tampered with and so on and so forth. So again, right. there's just, um, you know, tamper proof products. This comes straight from our factory. We, you know, this is not diluted anyway, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, just read down another one. Fake, do not buy. Okay, same sort of thing. Best cleanser I've ever had. Now, the thing about that being the headline for the, um, let me just bring you back onto the screen so I can see. You. Now, it says the best cleanser I ever had, right? That's what it says. Mm -hmm. And if I look at that, I go, 
wow, you know, you've got you've got a few space, you've got a few characters to write your initial thoughts on a product, um, and you've chosen to write best cleanser I've ever had. Um, the one underneath it, the most gentle, natural cleanser that I know of. This is language that, that people are using to describe cleansers. These aren't marketers. These are just ordinary people, which yeah. tells me if I, on my page, I'm going to say, I think this will be the best cleanser you've ever had. Guess what? I'm using language that the customers are using. Just okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It is the, and so where someone's written here, the most gentle, natural cleanser that I know of, I would put, I reckon, you know, from what customers say, this will be the most gentle, natural cleanser that you've ever come across. and I'm going to issue that almost as a challenge. If you find a cleanser that is more gentle, more gentle and natural than this one, let me know. You can have your money back, right? I'm just, okay. this is what's on their mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not what's on your mind formulated. This is on what's on their mind. So yeah, I often use it. No scent doesn't sting in the eyes. Okay. Removes makeup very well. So yeah. important things here. What's the smell like? Does it sting in my eyes? Does it remove makeup? Um, yeah. Okay, so you're finding out the language of the customer and you're finding out the features that they kind of You will find phrases in. that jump out at you, which you would yeah. never have used, but I would definitely um, yeah. use it. So I highly recommend it because there's no perfumes inside. My skin is very sensitive. My only downside is how it looks as a substance. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to read the because it's a bit I've weird. used it. I know what it looks like. <laughs> but it's, um, it's, 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 I would be reading through, I would figure out who, you know, what the cleansers are on Amazon that yeah. are competitors to yeah. the ones that I've got. What else would people be buying? Looking yeah. at those reviews, looking at those questions and making sure I'm putting that content on my website. I don't want to give anybody a reason to leave with unanswered questions. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. This no, it is makes what's total important sense. for these guys. And so, um, whether it's bullet points, whether it's paragraphs, yeah. videos, however, I may have the longest sales page in the world. Right. But everything's on there. Okay. And it will draw people in. Does that make sense? Okay. And that's yeah. how I'd find language. Um, okay. Because one, one of the ladies here has put gentle and doesn't foam. Hurrah. I'd be like, you know what? If I had a cleanser that was gentle and doesn't foam, you would go to the landing page. There'll be a picture of your wife and it would say gentle and doesn't foam. Hurrah! Exclamation mark. Because why not? That's, that would work, actually. That makes sense. Do you yeah. see what I mean? So It's bold. It's kind of, yeah. It stands out and it's different. Yeah. And you're, you're actually being really in your face about your claims. So um, that's how I would go and find language. That's how I'd go and find out what points I need to put on my page. I would just research. Um, Amazon wouldn't be the only place that I'd go to. There'd be many places, but it would be the first place that I would look at just to cool. pull that language out. Um, yeah. So does that, okay. any questions on that? No, that makes total, total sense. It's, um, yeah, I think uh, I, it being so close to the product, I think that's my, been my Achilles heel. I, I bang on about the ingredients all, all day long because I know how good they are, but the... Um, yeah, I'm not using the language of the customer. So yeah, it makes total sense. You, yeah. And just put it in their language. Right. So yeah. if you've got argan oil in there, just why do I care? Yeah. And actually yeah. one of the things, again, you could do, which very few people do is you could do a whole page on oil, argan oil. Why should I give a flip? So whenever you use argan oil in your ingredients list, it just links through to a page where you say, well, this is what it is. This is why it's important. This is what it does. Yeah. Especially the ones you, people can't pronounce. This is why this ingredient is important. This is what it does. And yeah. It's just, it's a, ball ache and it's time consuming because you're creating a page for each ingredient in your product yeah you know what you're doing you're showing your expertise you're showing you care yeah. you're showing your passion for the product and how and why it's going to make a difference to your skin yeah. nobody else is doing that and that i come back to this point and that's what will make you unique and different okay yeah, yeah yeah totally i might yeah even a video about each 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 ingredient i might do you can yeah. totally do and just to you know for people listening um just for your own knowledge the videos are really, really easy to do. They don't need to be anything complicated. You literally have got a video production screen in your pocket, right? I've got my mm -hmm. iPhone here. I would, you see these windows behind me. Uh, and if you're listening to the podcast, I have windows behind me. I would, I would literally turn around. So the window was in front of my face and I would have my camera here like this. So I've got the natural light from the window. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Would be, I would be a little bit careful about what was behind me. Um, I just, I wouldn't want to give the impression that, you know, whilst we're small, we're not Mickey Mouse. 
just do it yeah, a yeah, yeah. more amateurish. Yeah. So I'll just be a little bit clear on what's behind me. And I'll yeah. put the video on a tripod and I would hit record and I would talk to it like I was talking to my best friend. And if yeah. it helps to put your wife or to swap for your wife to put you behind the camera and talk to you rather than the camera because it's yeah. more natural. Yeah. yeah. And then okay. the second tip is throw away the first 10 videos you do because they'll be rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> As you get okay. used to it, right? And you start to yeah, understand yeah, yeah. what it is that you do you find the video and then just play the videos to your friends do you find this interesting would you watch it how long would you watch it for don't make a yeah. video more than two or three minutes it doesn't need to be you know rather than having one long video just break it up how to use it yeah ingredients you yeah know, um top three things it's going to do for your skin okay and all that sort of stuff cool brilliant then i think I think we've probably gone through fair fair amount of stuff there. It's a bit of a head there's, there's so much for me to do. Um, I don't want but you to feel – I, what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. Um, but start with the fundamentals. What yeah. makes you different, right? It's, yeah. it's your story, it's you, it's how much you care, and it's your passion. Yeah. So show that in the, in the website, show that in the pictures – but do it yep. in a story brand way that actually makes your customer out to be the hero and not you. Even yep. if your logo stays the same size, I don't care. Do you know what I mean? Even if home stays in your main navigation, if you do that yep. and make that on your landing pages, how it works. So it's your wife talking about it and how it's going to transform your skin. Um, yeah. And then let me know how you get on. Will do. I think, I think yep. that, that will be a game changer, but don't get, don't get overwhelmed by it and think, Goodness me, there's so much to do. Mind you, no. COVID-19, what else are we going to do right now? Well, exactly. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're all stuck in, in, in the house. So it's, I think little little small bites of the elephant and I'll, I'll get there. But I, something just clicked in my head when you, you were just talking through this. So I've got, I've got a kind of a bit of a vision of where to take this now. So thank you very much. No problem. Can I ask, what is your main takeaway? It's always a good coaching question. <laughs> Well, I th I, my main takeaway is, is that, that the site just looks like a, a bland kind of L'Oreal site with with um, with pictures of that I've nicked off Unsplash, um, uh, and and there is no personality to it, and and nothing to convince the the, the person who knows nothing about me or, as to why they should buy my product. So um, it's just doing a, a woeful sales job, to be honest. And my my only bit of leverage that I have is the fact that. I know the the product and I know how good it is. So um, I need to put a bit more personality into this brand and make it a bit different and and make it stand for something. So yeah, I think I think that's what what I'm going to do. I just need to sit down and have a bit of a plan as to what what I do first. I think, but yeah, it's been really really helpful. Thank you, Matt. Do you feel like? Uh, you can actually change the site. What I don't want you to do is feel like, oh my god, it's crap. I'm just going to close everything. Do you f do you feel like you've got the ability and the the the, the wherewithal to make the changes that you want to make? Yeah, I mean the, the 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 theme that I've got is fairly configurable, and um, as I say, my background isn't in skincare, so I do know a little bit about um, web development as well. So. Um, I'm I'm not adverse to doing a bit of CSS, so I could I can do that. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit of a jack of all trades, master of none type person. But um, so yeah, I, I can I could definitely I, I totally see that, that that it's it's not it's not standing out. Some the, the navigation isn't standing out. The images are too big. The logo is too big. I can definitely make all of those changes very very quickly. It's the, it's the more fundamental kind of how do I explain that this brand and these products is, is what I need to think about uh, a bit more, but the other, th the other little tips about nav and stuff is, is, is gold. So yeah, it's, it's brilliant. I've got loads of little notes here and I'll rewatch this, this video, this Facebook live. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Well. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously if you have any questions, let me know. Um, yeah. and I'll leave you with one final idea that I wrote down in my notes as you were talking earlier. And that is, um, you talked about how you learned how to make soap. Mm. And again, one of the things that is interesting in your story is you've learned how to make this skincare. You formulated it yourself. Yeah. And there are people out there who will want to make their own skincare but don't know how to do it. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So you've got your products, which are great products, and people could buy them. 
But I also wonder if there's a sidestep here which says, you know what, we'll show you how to make your own soap and you can buy the ingredients to do that off our website and watch our video course on how to do it. Yeah. Um, and you get the same quality ingredients as you do in our, you know, our flagship cleansers. Well, obviously, don't tell people how to make your flagship cleansers um, yeah. because that's obviously your IP. But there is this element of the hobbyist out there that will go, that is really kind of them. And they mm-hmm. told me how to make a few products. Yeah. Um, yeah. I will buy some of the other stuff from them as well. It's a good idea. I mean, you know, I've, I've got all the ingredients lying about, so it, it could easily package it up and, you know. Why yeah. not? Because, you know, for me, uh, as uh, and I'm talking as a man, I, I, bearing in mind I do know a lot about beauty, I, I suppose I'm the wrong person. But if I was looking at your website thinking well, I could buy my wife a gift, I haven't got a clue, right? Most men mm. won't have a clue on what to buy them. Um, but if you've got a nice soap making kit, I'll go, you know what? I think she'd really enjoy that. That would be quite good. Yeah. Um, and so I might buy that as a gift. Yeah. Do you yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. And you're, you're demonstrating your expertise by showing people how to make stuff. Right. Yeah, totally. Um, and you're helping them by giving them the ingredients and packaging that up nicely. Um, yeah. And it's just a different avenue to sell products uh, yeah. through Facebook because that would be a great advert, you know, uh, soap making kits. Um, buy so many yeah. tickets for a gift and see what happens. I think it'd be quite fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good idea. Thank you. Right. I'm aware that we've been going on uh, for a while now. Jeez, an hour and 20 minutes. So if you stayed with us this whole time, thank you so much. I appreciate your patience with us. Uh, I hope you have also got something out of this as well as Simon. Uh, Simon, listen, thanks for being on the show. Really appreciate it. And um, yeah, it's been great having you. Do come back and let us know how you get on. Will do. Thank you. It's been really, 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 really helpful. Um, I, you know, I've just, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to, um, to do this without, without your help. I don't think I, I've just been, I would have closed it down. So yeah. yeah, thank you. No problem. Let's give it a stab and see how you get on. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so totally. Great. Thank you, Simon. So there you go. I hope you got a lot out of that uh, and some ideas for your own website. Uh, and how you could improve it. It was a great conversation. I love Simon's openness and honesty, which was great. Such a great guy. Make sure you do check out his website, uxbskincare.com. UXB, short for Uxbridge, not an exploded bomb, as we found out. Uh, uxbskincare.com. Go check it out. Even buy some stuff if you're in the UK um, and see what you think and let Simon know. If you've got any tips, connect with him. I'm sure he'd love to hear from you. Uh, but do check out his site. If you have your own website and you would like us to do a coaching call with your website, uh, we are starting to do more of those again in the podcast. So we would love to hear from you. Do get in touch and we will happily go through your website just like we have done with Simon's. If you would like to see more about what we were talking about, do check out the video, which will be on our website at mattedmondson.com. You will be able to see that and watch as we go through his website as well as um, hear about it. I hope what we said audibly makes sense visually uh, for you just listening onto the podcast. So uh, all that's left for me to say is make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast to do hook us up on LinkedIn uh, and any kind of social media that you're on. It'll be great to connect with you. I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, all of them. Just search for Matt Edmondson and I should pop up with a big fat cheesy grin, hopefully. Uh, it'll be great to hear from you. Thanks for listening. Appreciate you being uh, being here. Appreciate you uh, being part of the show and what we do. Uh, it's always, always helpful uh, to know that actually what we do makes a difference. Uh, I, I quite like that. So wherever you are, stay safe, especially at this time. And we will be back again soon with some more podcasts. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Curiosity Podcast. You can subscribe or you can also join us on Facebook Live. See you next time.